Guys, hopefully you saw on our social media channels that we're doing a neuro-European adventure, which is pretty damn cool. So to talk us through that, get a bit of insight into the whole thing, the man himself, Jesse Coyle, welcome. Hello, thanks for having me on. We're gonna do this in one hit. And yeah, I just wanna sit down with you, chat through this whole thing and go through the races, go through why we're doing it, where we're going, and give you guys a bit of insight into it. So- Well, we leave really soon. So our, my flight leaves, and most of us leaving from New South Wales are leaving on the 14th of June, which gets us there on the 15th. And we're there for about six and a half weeks. Our accommodation in Europe ends on the 30th of July. Yeah. So month and a half over there. So the accommodation, I'll just quickly point out, was basically just a, an Airbnb, right? Yeah, it's staying in, so we're staying in one house. This comes into what we'll get into in terms of the racing, but we've chosen racing around staying in a single ACOM. Uh, as most of you probably know, it's Nero's first time in Europe. So we didn't want to go over there, bite off more than we can chew and have this <laughs> tour <laughs> across <laughs> the continent. Mm. Uh, it's pretty stripped down, pretty bare bones. So. The whole premise of the entire trip is staying in one house. It's just an Airbnb that we booked. Um, it's on the border of Netherlands and Belgium. And we're gonna be in there for the six and a half weeks in one spot. Uh, that's where we're staying. The place we're staying is actually called Castro. Oh, I'm gonna butcher every mm. single name in this thing. <laughs> it's like the town is called Castrolet, I think it's called. It's like a little a house in a farming place outside of a town called Hoogstraten. Beautiful. Yeah. Beautiful. Lovely. Can I throw a fun fact in? Because mm -hmm. we booked this accommodation at the same time we were booking the Grafton accommodation. The guys are staying there for six weeks. So basically that cost 11 grand, I think, yeah. the accommodation. Yeah. The Grafton accommodation for two nights cost almost $2,000. Mm -hmm. I was gonna put that in there as a yeah. little bit of a reality check with what's going on in Australia at the moment. But yeah, so that is where the guys are now. Before I go into specific details in each race, let's give you an overview of what like why have we chosen to stay where we're staying and what types of racing we're gonna do. So there's basically three types of racing we're gonna do on this trip. Uh, the first part is the UCI races. We've chosen all one day UCI races, which we're gonna do. We're also gonna be doing what are called pro camises in Belgium, which are just as hard pretty much as the UCI races. And we've got four of them that are on in the time we're over there. Down from that again, so that's the two sort of the hardest parts of race we're gonna do. Stepping down from there again, what will be almost the bread and butter of the racing for the tour will be uh, these Dutch criteriums, which we're gonna get uh, and do. These are, are roughly around two hours. They're usually about 80 kilometers. And basically you go out to a small town in the Netherlands. There's a, there's a criterium set up. They're very technical, just basically running around town. And you do about an 80 kilometer criterium there. Um, really, Really tough, good quality racing, but um, part of the reason for staying where we're staying and doing these Dutch criteriums, because if you've heard people about going over to uh, race in Belgium before, um, one of the reasons why that's not great for a team like us is because we're all UCI Continental riders. In Belgium, if you're a Continental registered rider, you can't do the sort of local racing oh, that you would okay. normally do. You're just not allowed to enter. In Belgium, you can, as a Conti rider, you can only enter, as an overseas Conti rider, you can only enter the Pro Camises, which there aren't that many on. On the six weeks that we're over there, there's only four on, right. which, we're all, which we're doing all of them, which is not enough, it's yeah. not enough racing. So the sort of the trick here is that we're, we're staying right on the northern part of Belgium. We're actually technically in the Netherlands. And what that means is, um, because the Netherlands have a different rules, their governing body says, if you're a, if you're a continental rider, that's cool. You can come and do these low, I'm calling it local racing, but it's, if you're in Australia, at least, it's much harder than local racing. But as a Conti rider racing in the Netherlands, you can do those races um, and there's no issues there. So we're kind of getting the best of both worlds where we're getting slightly easier racing in these Dutch criteriums. So you know. I just want to come back to something you said at the beginning of that, which was we're doing one day UCI races, not tours mm -hmm. so why no tours what was the what was the actual like reality of that yeah there, there were tours that we potentially could have done and pushed for entry for but being basically 
staying, we would try to do the entire trip based out of one house, one accommodation. So everything had to be within driving distance of that. And also, if we were then doing a tour, then we would be booking the accommodation for different segments, then moving, driving to a race, staying somewhere different and Who's having- Who's driving? Who's driving that thing around? Yeah. Who's refilling the bottles of that next tour? Mm -hmm. All that stuff that you have to do at the end of that first day, all of a sudden, like, has to be done. My other question is just in relation to who, this, like essentially the start lists of these races, like what are we looking at here? Are we looking at racing against just other sort of Dutch clubbies or kind of what's the, what's the crack in that, that situation? Yeah, as, depending on what type of race you're doing, the, the fields will change. So at these local Dutch criteriums, you'll get a mix of the, the club A graders who are really good and <laughs> stronger than the club riders, at least here in Australia. And then you've got in those races, uh, um, so I did these races in 2018, that's how I kind of know about them. So you usually get on most races, you'll get 10 to 15 continental level riders at a crit, um, depending on which one you go to. And that, that's a really good quality level of racing, but something that's achievable, like the sort of, in terms of expectations, coming over to these races, I would be expecting that we're winning some of these Dutch criteriums. Um, so that's sort of the level we're at. It's probably similar to a, an NRS level field, um, but with the added X factor that the courses are very technical. Sometimes you, all you're doing is turning corners and then you, you're going over cobblestones and things like that, speed bumps. So that's level racing there. As we go up from there, then you're getting into the, the pro camises, which have are insanely strong fields. They're also longer races. So these pro camises are all around five hours long. So 160K, that sort of thing. And that's where you're getting the time of the year we're going. We probably won't get too many world tour riders just because it's the Tour de France is on and there's, you're fully in season. Earlier in the season at the pro camises, you'll get riders coming out of their off season doing some racing to get in form. But we might get a few, maybe a few world tour riders, but it'll mostly be all the good continental riders in Belgium, and then possibly some pro conti riders, I don't know what they're called now, pro, mm -hmm. pro conti riders um, from some of the teams. And they're brutal, like they're sort of, in terms of expectations, going into a pro camis, <laughs> if we can get one of the guys in the break, in the move that wins, in the selection, and they roll in for, <laughs> if one of the guys roll in for a 12th, we would be stoked. Mm -hmm. Like that's the level, you're not, Certainly not going into these races thinking that we're going to be even really top tenning. Yep. It's not. They're brutal. Absolutely brutal. Okay, so that's the pro camisas. What about these UCI level races? What's the story with those ones? Yeah, so let's let's just take the time and go through each one we're doing because yep. that's the most interesting part. Um, they're the ones that have UCI points and that, you know, have bigger names. So yep. going through them, we arrive on the 15th. On the 19th, we've got the first UCI race, uh, which is, that's a tough... That's a tough turnaround. So the race is in the Netherlands, in uh, in Gils, which is the southern part of the Netherlands. Nicely, it's only 20 kilometers away from where we're staying. And it's the Midden Brabant Port Omloop. Um, 185 kilometers. It's uh, a new course as well. So we don't have, the tech guide hasn't been released, so we don't have too much information in terms of a, a profile, but that's gonna be, that's brutal. So 185K, the sorts of teams we're gonna get here, a lot of actually the big, uh, UK teams, which most of probably your viewers will probably be more familiar with, like Ribble Weld Tight, with Sun God, those big continental teams in the UK go over who are, who are really strong. And then obviously all the uh, continental teams from, from Belgium and the Netherlands will be there. Um, that's, that'll be one of the hardest ones we're doing. Then we've got a whole bunch of those Dutch criteriums, bit of a break, guys will do a pro camis. And then on the 10th of July, we've got our second uh, UCI race, one which has the start list released already, which we can go through. And the race is in Belgium, and it's the it's an it's <laughs> the name is called District in Pil Ekeren Dern, and Ekeren and Dern are two towns. So we basically do us just outside of um, just north of Antwerp, yep. just outskirts of the city. So you do loops around Ekeren. And you go over and you do loops around Dern, and then I think you finish the race. So 165 kilometers, that one's, that one's flat. Yep. It's just a pure road race. But in terms of the teams we're up against, um, we've actually got a pro Conti team in this race. So Sport Vlander and Balwas will be there, which will be really cool. And we're actually the only uh, Australian team 
in this race. Um, so some of the other teams, like with Sun God, as I mentioned, the development team of Team DSM will be there. Uh, who else we got? Just going through the list here. Evo Pro out of Ireland. We've got Black Spoke from New Zealand. Um, going through a whole bunch of uh, Conti teams from the Netherlands. Then the next race we've got now, there's one race in the middle here, which I'll get into in a sec, but the, the third UCI, so they're all, these are all UCI 1.2s, which is the lowest category of um, one UCI, day. of one day UCI races. Yep. Uh, next race, Sunday, the 24th of July. So this is at the end of the trip. We've got a one day race in France called Grand Prix de la Ville Peronche. I've probably butchered Beautiful. that one again. Beautiful. This one is quite interesting because this one has cobbled sections. So it's just, it's in northern France, actually near Roubaix, and there's cobbled sections in this one. So that'll be really, I think the guys will really enjoy it. It'll be brutal, but it'll be really fun for the guys to actually race. It's 163K, so they'll get to do a long race with cobbled sections, which outside Roubaix, which is pretty cool. Like, vote, that's vote amazing. now, will we be the only team on rim breaks? <laughs> I reckon we will be. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. So that's, that's pretty cool. So they're the free 1.2s. Now there is one fourth race, which... We're not confirmed in yet. They haven't released the list of teams, but we've been in contact with the race. They've written back saying teams are going to be announced. So, you know, it's a possibility. And it's actually a 1.1, so it's a step up. And the race is called Slag Om Norg, and it's a, it's a gravel, it's got gravel sections in it. Sick. So this will have a really strong start list. It's in the Netherlands, uh, in, in the northern part of the Netherlands, 187 kilometers with gravel sections. But you can see, I guess, Chris, you can put up the calendar, but because these races are so long, you could, even if you're doing two or three, of the, two, if you're doing even two a week, two 180K full gas road races a week, you're cooked. Plus you're then going and doing some of these crits. It's, 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 it's gonna be a balance. You know, this, even this um, calendar that we've got here, they'll probably be ones we have to just scrap because, um, it's a balance. You want you want to get the the guys want to get their money's worth and get as much racing experience as they can, but there's no point everyone falling in a heap three weeks in because they've raced too much. So, oh, can we can mention oh, um, other comment? This uh, second UCI race we're doing in Belgium, they're paying us. Are you serious? They're giving us four hundred euros as oh, compensation to start. I just wanted to add that. <laughs> I wanted to add that in there because that that's pretty cool. That's a perfect yeah. segue. That is a perfect segue, Jesse. Is to like, why why are we doing this? Why like, because it does seem like a lot of effort and everything to go to. And like the first the first answer, well maybe you should, from a rider's perspective, you want to talk from a rider's perspective first, like. Mm. Why do this, or is it obvious? <laughs> well, I th I think it's obvious, but let's go. I mean, let's just go through it anyway. Um, if we look at, so we're obviously in Australia. There is a gap in our domestic racing series from the start of May until the end of July. And if you want to be doing racing, uh, you have to go somewhere else to get it because even our state-based racing here in Australia is not that good. So to actually even just get racing, it, it makes sense. I mean, just look at that. Look at that block of racing in six weeks. You could not, I mean, you could try and do that in Australia. You would have to travel probably 700 kilometers a day to try and get those races. But at the end of the day, you're not even, it's not even worth talking about. So mm -hmm. yeah, just that pure, like seismic amount of racing. And then I suppose the other thing from the rider's perspective is like, is there opportunity here? Do you know what I mean? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's more, there's, to be honest, there's way more opportunity for the riders than there are for the team because as you probably know, most of you would never have heard of any of these races and will never hear of any of these races until probably you watch a vlog we do on them. So in terms of exposure for the team, it's not awesome, but for the riders, getting a result in, with, against some of these teams, against these start lists means a lot because the level of racing is so high. So for the guys, it's, it's massive, a massive racing opportunity for them personally. We've given a good, that's sort of a good overview. I thought it might be interesting, or it could be interesting to, to just set what it might be like day to day for the guys. Like, how, so how is it gonna work? I mean, was that, would that be interesting to sort of go through? Yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, so yeah. because we're staying in a house, it's, it's all, it comes back to this house thing, because the whole trip, is is all has been organized around staying in one location so 
um, actually, it, the way I actually picked the races was, the UCI races, you have to have a team car. So we were gonna have to drive to them anyway. So as long as they were in, within driving distance, that was all good. So they weren't too much of a hassle. Um, oh, we've actually, by the way, we've got a car and a van organized for this trip. That's how we're gonna be getting around. But then with the other races, um, sorry, the pro Camises as well, you have a car in the race. Yeah. So in those in the Camise, we have a car in the convoy. So the car, we would have to be driving to those anyway. But as, besides from those, it was basically a matter of what I did was I got all the Dutch criteriums that we were allowed to enter for the entire time we're away. Mm. And I dropped the pins, all the pins on a map. <laughs> and I basically picked the location where we would be within riding distance to most of them. Because this trip, if you're getting in the car to go to every race, is going to be very tiring. Yeah. So if you, can, if you can just take the load off by having some of these Dutch criteriums you're able to ride out, race, and then ride home, is really nice. It does take the, take the pressure off. So um, when Chris puts up, he's probably already put it up, but you'll see in this um, screenshot he's put up of the race calendar, there is the distance that the race is from our accommodation. You can see a lot of them are under 50K. And if they're under 50K, it means we can ride out race and ride home and it's about a uh, what that you know that could be like 150 160k day training session max so that was that was why we're staying where we are we're close to belgium but we're also close to a lot of the um dutch criteriums so we can ride out and back and that'll be it basically ride out race come back um and then drive to the bigger races like i know you kind of mentioned a little bit about like those separate races but like are there any expectations here? What's the what's the goal? Yeah, well, let, let's let's I mean, let's go through the riders, but well, let's do it starting with the riders. So, who we got going? So, look, we're not going. <laughs> honestly, the team the team that we got going is a lot of the guys don't have some of the experience. So, um, you know, guys like John O, Lockie, who we've news, who've just signed, Ben, who we've just signed. So, you know, we, we're not sending a miles. team of. Um, of super experienced guys, and that's we'll be pretty upfront with that. But if we if we break it down in terms of the riders, these especially these Dutch criteria suit Miles to a T. Mm -hmm. Like he, if he's got some good form, he's got a good kick on him. He can handle his bike really well. He's a smaller rider, and a lot of these criteria are more about acceleration out because there's so many corners, as opposed to some of these road races where it's just you know big Belgium guys. Like he's a smaller rider, so these criteria like look out for Miles. In these touch criteriums, I I have a feeling he's he's going to clean up really well, so he's probably going in with some expectations and you know with actually a shot of getting some good results. Ben Carmen as well. It's not his ideal trip. He would probably be prefer to be further south and more in France, where you're doing hillier road races. As someone who excels on climbs, but Ben's got the experience, so he'll he'll do well in some of these longer road races. Um, but he's not 80 kilos, so he's not going in there thinking he's going to be, you know, tailing guys up in sprints, but he's someone that should be pretty comfortable getting in moves and getting in some of these tough, these breakaways in these bigger races that are really hard to get in. Honestly, really, it's, it's Ben and Miles in terms of results who are probably looking at really, really excelling it in this trip. For the other guys, realistically, it's more about the experience, learning, getting comfortable in the bunch and that sort of thing. So if we go through the riders, uh, we've got... John O'Farley, um, still a young guy. I think he's only 20. Uh, so big sprint on him, big, big sprint. So it'll be for him, for John, it'll be a matter of getting through some of these races, learning how to position well and, and seeing what he can do at the end. Um, Aiden as well, he would also, similar to Ben, smaller rider, good climb. He'd probably prefer to be doing some more hillier road races. But can can get himself around a crit yeah. like if you know some of you guys in the Melbourne scene know Aiden can get through a crit, good good sort of all rounder rider. Wouldn't be surprised seeing him getting in some moves. But you can kind of see that the language I'm using is more. I wouldn't be surprised to see him getting in moves or you know we're not coming in here thinking these guys like these guys are going to be winning. Um, ben and Lockie, two new guys on the team. They'll have to sort of learn how things are flowing and. Ben's got the advantage of already being over there, so he will already have a bit of a sense of how the racing is. And he's sort of, you know, he's in his 70 kilo uh, mark, so he sort of suits him better. And then we've got Lockie. Um, Lockie's actually wasn't on an NRS team before, so it's going to be a massive step up for him. So he's, you know, we're not going in with Lockie having any expectations. It'd be a, a fun trip for him to sort of learn the ropes 
and learn off, you know, it's really good for someone like Lockie to learn off Miles and Ben. And All right, so I reckon that is our scattergun preview to the Nero Euro adventure done. Guys, yeah, we were talking about this the other day. Like, we, we really would love to know from you guys what kind of content you would like to see from over there. So Jesse is going to be our man on the ground. My, my thinking was like, try and give a sort of, a write a diary type stuff of like the reality of what's going on and then um, put that here on, on this channel and then maybe on your channel. I know you've got some of your own ideas what you'd like to, to play around with. Yeah, I was gonna try and show the trip basically from my experience and, and do it pretty, I wanna try to do regular videos. So almost sort of a video a day or every two days just showing what, not necessarily just in the racing, but just what the trip's like overall. I uh, probably won't be spending too much time editing things, but just lots of clips and just showing what the racing's like. And then I guess we'll have, we'll, we'll, we'll be strapping cameras to the guys' bikes. And then maybe, you know, we were thinking we might catch up and yeah. and summarize. Yeah, so I was thinking like we could set a day a week where we just sit down and do like a, a video call and run through the week, the highs and the lows and sort of give a bit of a podcasty style review of, of how it's sort of gone and get one of the riders in to have a chat about one of the races and that kind of thing and overlay some bike footage. So that should be a bit of fun, mm. I reckon. Mm. But yeah, guys, let us know down below what you would like to see. Obviously, all the links to, to Jesse's stuff will be down in the description. But I think that's us done. Are we gonna are we we signing out here? I think we're signing out. We're signing out. All right, guys, I'll see you real soon and uh, chat to you.